Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In this exercise, we're going to look at the SQL script debugger. Now, personally, when I evaluate a development environment, I care a lot more about the debugger than I do the code editors. With a code editor, you can get by with basically, as, you know, as long as it can input text and save it, you're good. Everything else is sort of uh, icing on top of the cake. But a debugger, that's essential. That's what pulls your butt out of the fire when, when something goes wrong. Uh, so I'd much rather have a bare bones editor and a great debugger than, than vice versa. And I think that you'll see that the debugging experience in the SQL script environment is, is quite good and uh, where maybe we fall down a bit in the, uh, in the editor experience, particularly with the client side syntax errors, uh, we, we make up for it in the, in the debugger area. But let's see for ourselves. Let's go back into the system and let's do some debug. So first of all, um, we've already got some stored procedures out here. We don't need to create any new ones just to debug them. Let's go back to our get PO header data, a very simple stored procedure that we created earlier on. It's basically got some select statements in it and then it will uh, uh, join them together. Um, so nice and easy to, to debug. The one thing that we have to do here is for any stored procedure, we have to say that we want to open it for debugging. And you'll notice that uh, that does a couple things. It pops up and starts the debugger in essence. It asks us to attach to the debugger. And we've got a couple different options here. You know, if you're just going to test from the SQL console, as we've been doing this whole time in the database explorer, then that's probably what we want the debugger to attach to. But maybe you want to debug from your uh, service layer, from your external application, from your reporting tools. That's all possible as well, but you know you're going to have to either uh, attach with a with a particular debug token or or uh, connect uh, um, a particular connection ID or attach to a certain database username or application username. Now, I find I, I tend to use the SQL console when I'm testing from the database explorer, of course. If I'm testing from like my Node.js or Java services, my UI, then I'm going to probably test by username and, and probably application username in that regard so I can get my external user ID and not the, uh, the container technical name, which is what it would be executing as. Um, so it's very easy to start the debugger in those in those different modes. But we're just going to go with the default here, the SQL console, and we're going to test from here. Um, you'll notice that the other thing this did, it opened the SQL script procedure in the uh, in the editor, it, 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 you know, the Web ID editor, but here inside the database explorer. So not the, the normal runtime view. Uh, we're seeing the design time view of, of the procedure, and this is where we can set breakpoints. Basically, we just click over here in the... Uh, in the in the line number area and that automatically sets a breakpoint uh, you can also right mouse click and choose it from the context menu if you prefer uh, but uh, you know and toggle it back off by clicking on it again pretty pretty straightforward but we want to just go ahead and stop here on our first line of code now you'll you'll see here let's just uh, Let's just go ahead and generate a call statement for this. It'll open in another SQL console. And when we execute it in this SQL console, it stops. The, the processing over here is, is held. Um, but uh, what we've done is, is we've stopped. We're in the debugger. We can see which line that we're on. Uh, we can see the call stack here. We can see our input and output. Uh, are we, uh, if we had input variables, we don't in this case. But we can see our output variable. Um, we can see that it's a table that it has zero records in it right now. Um, you know, I can see the content in this table. Of course, there's no records in it, so there's nothing to see right now. I can even save uh, the data in the table. That's nice when you're debugging and maybe you've got a complex process and you want to save the data and then stub it in at a, at a later state. Um, uh, that's that's uh, a very nice feature. We also have see some of our system variables here. The built-in SQL script variables like current object name, current schema, row count, any SQL errors. Uh, so not a whole lot of built-in system variables, but we have them all available there. And at this point, we can use the single step. So we'll step over that, 
and we can see that now we're on line 20 of our procedure. Uh, still don't have any data in our output table because we've only filled our intermediate table, but look, now we've got local variables. So now we can see that PO create count. We can see it's got 33 records. And probably more interesting is we can display the content that's in here as well and see the data that's being built up in these intermediate uh, uh, table variables. Okay. Uh, so we've seen the data. Oh, what, uh, we can also do expressions. This is a pretty cool way to basically inject some code into the running application. And uh, yeah. now... We share the debugger between Node.js and Java and SQL Script. So it's looking at our project and it sees that we have a Node.js module and we have a database module. So we have to choose, although it, it defaulted the right thing here, SQL Script. Uh, and basically now we can say select star from PO create count. There we are. Where create count is less than 30. So maybe we're going to do some analysis on our internal table. You can imagine if that PO create count had millions of rows, we wouldn't be able to just scan through it and, and count how many of them have a certain criteria, in this case, uh, a count of less than 30. But we can write little snippets of code that, that get injected into our application. And what we see here is that little code has, has executed now. It ran against our intermediate variable. We have 15 records. So we went from our total of 33 records uh, to, um, to limiting it to uh, 15 records, and then we could see the details of those, those 15 records as well. So really nice, really powerful feature to be able to inject code, to run tests, um, to, to manipulate data uh, while, while it's running. So let's uh, step again. And now we can see that we have two local variables. Uh, we could take a look at uh, both of them as well at this point. Um, and we can also go ahead and continue through our code. We'll go to the next one. Now we see our output. We have our three records in our output. We can view, preview our record, our output data here, just as we would see it. And of course we could hit resume at this point. And now it's executed the code and our output has come back to the SQL console, we see the same three records. Um, so very, very powerful capability that's there. Uh, now, some more things that we can do with the SQL script uh, debugger is we can also um, um, break on an error. So we don't always have to know where our, we don't have to set breakpoints in advance. Maybe we just know that our our code is blowing up, and any time that it hits a, a stop error, something would uh, kill the execution, we want it to automatically go into the debugger. Uh, so what we want to do here is we're going to need uh, some extra items um, to, to debug. So let's come over to our GitHub and pull them down. Debug perf test objects. Zip. So we'll download that. We'll save it here in our project. And now we'll go back to the web IDE and we'll come to SRC and we'll do an import. And let's bring these other stored procedures in. Debug performance test objects. in. I got a little underscore one on the end here. That's, uh, yeah, I don't think that would give me any problems, but let's, uh, oh, lost it there. Say okay. Yes, there's a file with stuff already existing. We want to merge that in, and what you'll see here is we get a couple new functions, a couple new procedures. That's going to give us some more long-running stuff and a couple procedures that have errors in them. Uh, so we'll have some, some more scenarios that we can debug, some more interesting debug scenarios. So let's go ahead and build this.
And now we can go back to the database explorer. I'm actually going to uh, detach the debugger so we can see the attach uh, dialog again because I want to point something out to you. Um, so what we want to debug here, let's see, we want to take this analyze error and we want to open it for debugging. And we get the attach again. I want to point out to you this option to break on exception. Now it's on by default. We're going to want it um, in, in this scenario, certainly, so that when a, a stopping exception occurs, we'll automatically go into debugger and give us a chance to, uh, to find out what's going on without having to pick through all the code and find out the spot that's throwing the error um, and set a breakpoint on it. We won't actually set any breakpoints in advance here. We'll just go ahead and, uh, and we've got our debugger attached and we'll just say generate call statement for this without setting any breakpoints. And we'll go ahead and click run and you see that it has stopped in the debugger. Actually over here in the SQL console it's still, still holding. Uh, part of the problem is that, uh, well, we're trying to do uh, division by zero. So, uh, so what we see here is uh, stop due to exception. Uh, we know that we've got something wrong. We can look at this uh, val here, val one minus one. That's going to give us zero. So then we're going to be doing divide by zero. That's uh, that's a bit of a problem. And we can check the call stack here, and we can see where the problem came from. Uh, because this uh, val one, uh, this val is being passed in, so we might say, well, let's find out where the source of this is coming from. So we go up in the call stack here to debug test, and what we can see here is the line uh, where we're coming here to get value. Well, it's this input tab items. One of the records in this input tab items must have a, a zero in it. Okay, so now we uh, we've traced back where we have our problem. Um, and we can further see here in this, uh, if we look at the debug test, um, we'll just step over there. And now we can take a look at our input tab. And uh, uh, we could uh, even view the data in it. And we can, we can see that... Uh, we want to, uh, we'll be able to uh, further investigate here a little bit. But let's see another technique that will help us investigate this problem. So if we were to uh, uh, continue debugging this, we don't necessarily want to, uh, to stub in data or try to uh, uh, manipulate this. We've got 2,000 records here. Um, so... Uh, what we want to do is uh, we're going to need this input data. We don't want to try to type it in by hand or something like that. Uh, so we'll use the save uh, table feature. We'll take it here at the point that it has 2,000 records in it. And we'll just use the save table. And it wants to know what name do we want to give it. So we'll say uh, my, let's say lowercase, my in, <laughs> input table and we'll hit save and now we can go ahead and resume debugging to let that finish and yes of course we got our division by zero error but now we can come to the debug test so we can go directly to the inner procedure here and we'll say uh, generate call statement and of course it's got this input parameter uh, we wouldn't want to sit here and type in all those records and all those values, right? But what we can do is we can take that save table and we can just have it be the input parameter. So just give it the same name because that's basically persisted as a temporary table in our session. And when we use that name, it's automatically going to use that uh, and it's stored values as the input parameter. So now we can... Uh, we can go ahead and run that. And yes, we still got the division by zero. That we're here in the, uh, in the debugger. Uh, so we were able to execute it directly. 
and uh, we can see the debug test here in the in the window and uh, we can step over and view the uh, input table and we could even oh I didn't uh, let's try that again oh, that's still running we're not in the right there we are didn't stop on our error there did it let's try this again Oh, I didn't want to close that. Sorry. No. Let's open that for debugging. We are attached. And one second here. My input table. There we are. We execute. Oh, uh, well, it helps if I type this correctly. My input table. Let's try that again. There we are. We got our division by zero. It stopped in the debugger. And we can step into, and we can see our input it has our 2,000 records in it, even though we didn't come through the surrounding analyze error that passed the data in, we stubbed it in from the uh, from the SQL console, uh, so we were able to uh, to see how we can reuse data from one debug session and feed it into a subsequent debug session.